the mTOR pathway is involved in activation of protein synthesis and pyrimidine synthesis within the cell. Likewise, the ras raf mec erc pathway is also involved in cellular growth processes. But how do these two pathways interact? Well, in this lesson, we're going to talk about how they interact and specifically how the ras raf mec erc pathway regulates the mTOR pathway. So mTOR complex 1 is regulated at the lysosomal interface and it is associated with several proteins. A couple of these are RAG and Regulator. Now mTOR complex 1 itself is activated by a protein known as REB or R-H-E-B. And REB protein is actually regulated um, through inhibition by tuberous sclerosis complex 1 and 2 or TSC1 or 2. So this is the foundation of regulation of the mTOR complex 1 pathway. So how does this tie in with the ras raf mec erc pathway? Well, the ras raf mec erc pathway is activated when a receptor within the cell membrane, known as EGFR, is activated by a number of different ligands. When this receptor is activated, it leads to the activation of a couple of proteins known as SOS and GRB2. These proteins then activate RAS and when a RAS becomes activated it will then lead to activation of BRAF which will then lead to activation of MEC1 and 2 which will lead to the activation of ERK1 and 2. So this is the general basic layout of the RAS RAF MEC ERK pathway. When we have an activated ERK1, it will actually lead to the inhibition. It will inhibit TSC1 and 2. And this will essentially activate the mTOR pathway. If you inhibit an inhibitor, it becomes activated. Now, ERK1 and 2 also have a role in activating RSK proteins. And RSK will also inhibit TSC1 and 2. So there are a two ways in which the ras raf mec erc pathway can lead to the inhibition of TSC1 and 2, which eventually leads to the activation of mTOR complex 1. So this is not the only way the ras raf mec erc pathway can activate the mTOR complex 1 pathway. RAS itself can bind to and activate PI3 kinase. And when PI3 kinase is activated, it will phosphorylate phosphatidylinositol diphosphate into phosphatidylinositol triphosphate, so PIP2 to PIP3. PIP3 concentrations will increase within the cell and will actually help recruit the proteins PDK1 and AKT toward the cell membrane. PDK1 will then act to activate AKT through phosphorylation. Check out my other lessons for more information on this um, mechanism. And PDK1 will also lead to the activation of mTOR complex 2 mTOR complex 2 will also act to activate AKT through a separate phosphorylation site. So PDK1 will phosphorylate AKT at one site, mTOR complex 2 will phosphorylate AKT at another site. Now when AKT becomes activated, it too will also inhibit tuberous sclerosis complex uh, proteins. So you see that there's actually three mechanisms whereby the ras raf mec erc pathway can lead to the activation of the mTOR complex 1 pathway, all at the junction of TSC1 and 2 proteins. ERC can inhibit TSC1 and 2, RSK proteins can inhibit TSC1 and 2, and AKT will also inhibit the same protein as well. All of these will lead to a disinhibition of REB, which will then lead to an activation of mTOR complex 1. When we have an activated mTOR complex 1, it can lead to several different downstream um, effects. Please check out my mTOR complex 1 video for more information on these downstream effects. There are many of them, but a couple I want to just quickly touch on. mTOR complex 1 inhibits autophagy. So when we have an activated mTOR complex 1, it will inhibit autophagy through a couple of different mechanisms. And mTOR complex 1 will lead to the phosphorylation and activation of P70S6 kinase, which will then lead to the activation of pyrimidine synthesis pathways and protein synthesis pathways as well. So as we can see, the ras raf mec erc pathway can lead to the activation of the mTOR complex 1 pathway, which can lead to 
these downstream effects, pyrimidine synthesis, protein synthesis, and inhibition of autophagy. But the ras raf pathway can also lead to several other effects independent of the mTOR complex pathway. ERK itself can enter the nucleus and lead to the activation of genes responsible for cell proliferation, survival, and metastasis. So if you want more information on this, please check out my uh, ras raf ERK pathway video um, for more details. So as you can see, the ras raf ERK pathway can lead to increased cell proliferation, survival, and metastasis. And because cell proliferation and metastasis and survival requires some of the effects of the mTOR complex 1 pathway, we see increases in pyrimidine synthesis, protein synthesis, and inhibition of the autophagy pathway. So they all work together in order to perform the roles of cell proliferation, metastasis, and generally anabolic processes within the cell. So please check out my other lessons uh, for more information on the ras raf erk pathway, the mTOR complex 1 pathway, and the AKT pathway. Also, if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to actually help support the channel. And thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.